With the holidays in the rear view, gardeners like us start getting that familiar itch to start growing again. We truly are a special breed. Even with weather like this, we're already starting to think about growing. But when is it actually time to start this year's garden? Oddly enough, the last of our harvest don't feel that far removed. And in the case of our broccoli, cauliflower, beets, and carrots, it actually isn't. And although that's not necessarily a bad thing, time waits for no one. The harvest and missed harvest of the past have no bearing on the new season upon us. So in today's video, let's scratch that gardening itch and in the process, figure out when is the best time to plant this year's garden. No doubt the best gardens are always planned well in advance. Not to mention starting your garden and planting your garden are often two very different things. Semantics aside, let me explain what I mean by that. When we talk about planting our gardens, we're referring to two things, either direct sowing our seeds in rows or transplanting our seedlings and starts. Both of these things usually occur after our last spring frost date, but if we're on our game, we'll have been quite busy before this. Planning out your garden in advance is actually kind of fun, and it can literally be done at any time of the year. Selecting and buying your seeds early, mapping out those crop locations, purchasing some soil, and even constructing new garden beds can all be done in the fall, winter, or even last minute in the spring. Sooner is better, but really, there's no time constraints. Starting your garden, however, well, that's a little more regimented. But what do we mean by starting our garden? Let me explain. In colder regions with an extended winter and a subsequently shortened growing season, many crops are grown by transplants instead of planting by direct seed. There simply isn't enough of a growing window to see longer crops fulfill their life cycle all the way to a harvest. Now, of course these plants can be bought at the store at the time of planting in the spring. There is nothing wrong with that, but there are a few drawbacks. Variety is almost always extremely limited and the timing and availability is completely out of your control. Not to mention the quality is often lacking at best. No problem though, because we can simply make our own, which is what I'm doing right here. Planting those seeds in cell trays or small pots, germinating them under ideal temperature and moisture, and nurturing them to full-fledged transplants ready for action as soon as the weather permits. This is what we call starting our garden. The window for this varies slightly for each crop, but a good rule of thumb is to start your seedlings indoors about four to six weeks before your last spring frost date. Now, that date is gonna be different for everyone depending on where you live. You simply gotta look it up. For example, for this year where I live in Victoria, BC, my last possible spring frost date is March 10th. So that means that I wanna get my indoor seedlings started no later than February the 10th. But what happens if we start too late? Well, there is some leniency with this, but if we let it go too long, we're simply negating the advantage of that head start that we're trying to create in the first place. So what's the point? On the other hand, we can also start our seeds too early as well. Huge, lush, overgrown starter plants that can be a nightmare to harden off, let alone move and transplant into the garden. Four to six weeks prior to your last spring frost date is a good rule of thumb. It won't steer you wrong. Okay, so that's the timeline when we're starting our own seedlings early inside. But what about when we want to plant these seedlings as well as the rest of the garden outside? Again, that's all going to depend on where you live. Warmer climates can plant pretty much any time when the ground isn't frozen. To really dial it down though, Check the back of your seed packets for each crop that you intend to grow for the best planting time instructions 
for your area. For everyone else, including those with a true winter, everything happens after that pivotal date in the spring, your last frost date. Now, certainly for the plants that you've grown yourself inside for the last four to six weeks, you're going to want to wait until all danger of hard frost has passed. Even then, for lush indoor plants, it's a pretty dangerous time of year, and you're going to want to wait another two weeks to fully acclimatize those plants, to harden them off before they're ready for the great outdoors. For some crops though, we can squeeze them in outside a little bit earlier. Peas, beets, carrots, and radishes can all be direct seeded a few weeks before your last spring frost date. A thin layer of soil plus a little bit of mulch on top should keep those seeds nice and snug if the temperatures do dip. But as long as the ground isn't frozen and your days are getting progressively warmer, these guys will sit perfectly dormant waiting to sprout as soon as those temperatures reach a threshold. Now, there's even some starters that can be transplanted early as well. Kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and even cauliflower can all be planted a little bit early, a little bit before that last frost date. Couple of weeks, no more than that, and do make sure that they've been properly hardened off first. The other thing we can do to really hone in on those planting dates is to keep a close eye on the forecast and the upcoming weather patterns. Just like no two climates are alike, no two springs are ever going to be the same. For example, if your last spring frost date is still weeks away, but you've checked the forecast and it's nothing but warm weather from now until then, you can most likely go ahead and plant without the fear of a frost killing your young seedlings. Conversely though, if you're still getting blasted with winter type weather, even on the precipice of your last spring frost date, well, you're going to have to wait it out just to be safe. In the end, there's a list of several things telling us that we're finally ready to plant out our garden. But on the flip side, there's an equal number of things telling us we're going to have to wait a bit longer. There is a science to it, yes, but because the weather is so unpredictable, especially at this time of the year, it's not really exact. Hey, we've covered a lot of things here today, important things, and the season is fast approaching. Let's recap those main points to make sure that it all sticks. In areas with a true winter, the gardening season, or more accurately, the growing window, is defined by two dates on the calendar, your frost dates. For starting and planting our gardens, the pivotal last spring frost date is key for both early seedlings as well as getting them outside. About four to six weeks before that date, which you have to look up for your area, is when we start our early seedlings indoors. Tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, and any plants that we want to give a head start to. This gives them enough time to get established to grow into tough little plants that we can take outside. Moving ahead, that same frost date is also key and that's when we can confidently start planting outside without fear of a nightly frost. Now, some crops can be planted early, like say your brassicas, while others it's wise to wait a little bit, like say your peppers. But for the most part, this timeline just works. As always though, weather and forecasts are highly unpredictable, especially in the spring. Keep an eye out for what your area is experiencing as that's far more valuable data than arbitrary dates on a calendar. Without a doubt, the best gardens are planned well in advance. And the best gardeners tend to time their crops perfectly based on observation and known dates. Hopefully all the tips and strategies that we covered here today on not only starting your garden, but planting it as well, set you up for your most successful growing season yet. Hey, happy gardening guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. 
I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.